All right, guys. Uh, this is recording for the next week that I'm out. I'll be back on Thursday, so just in a few days. Um, so let's let's start with non DP, non DP, because you guys got the most work ahead of you. Uh, the DP class, they're mostly done. They just have to work on their cast projects. So non DP, and also uh, special note for people who are not in the DP path, but did complete my TOK essay. Stick around to the end. I've got a special message for you guys. Okay, so non-DP path. And these are people who are doing the research paper that's due at the end of this semester. Um, your next assignment is up in Schoology. It's a sourcing assignment. Uh, and it's really, I just, I want you to read your sources and come to a conclusion. Now, this may sound silly, like we already know our sources. We found our sources. Why do I have to read my sources? Because you'd be surprised. Many people, whenever I said find sources, they just Google search, grab some things, look for the bibliography, or plug it into some website that did it for them, put them up there, and said, woohoo, I'm done. And they don't even act like they're re writing a research paper. They're just dumping sources in hopes that they get 100 on the assignment. And then they still have actually not done any real work on this project. So this is where I want you to come up with a thesis statement. But here's the catch. You need to read your sources first. You need to know what, what your thesis is going to be. This is important because what I see happens a lot of times is kiddos uh, have an argument they want to make. They want to say, I don't know, this, that, or the other about a political situation, but they can't find sources to back it up because they did it backwards. They came to their conclusion, oh, I know that so-and-so is a bad politician, or I know such-and-such such is the wrong way to act. I know this. And they go to find sources, and they can't find any sources, because really they just made everything up in their head. The way you do it is you don't do that. You say, I wonder if so-and-so is as bad as they say, or as great as they say, or if this is bad, if this is good, does this work, does this not work, you go in research, then you come to your conclusion based on research, then you get a thesis. So before you just go and write your thesis statement and say, done, what an easy assignment, thank you, Mr. Bruce, I want you to read your sources. I want your to, you to make sure that your thesis is backed up by evidence. And I give an example uh, in Schoology, but I'll go ahead and go over it real quick. Let's say your thesis, this is one that comes up a lot as like products, particular products, makeup products, athletic products, clothing, what have you, Supreme. But um, so I just picked athletic shoes, right? And you want to take a look at your questions you're asking. If your questions are garbage, rewrite them. Make better questions. But I've got two up here that are commonly asked about athletic shoes. And that is, one is, do they improve athletes' performance? And the other is, are they worth the price? And your thesis should answer both of those. My example thesis is, now I am making this up because I'm not going to go do a whole research for somebody else's topic, but you should do it. And if you come up with this information, here's how a research, here's excuse me, here's how a thesis should sound. While higher end athletic shoes can improve your performance on the field by a slight margin, most athletes would be better off using their extra cash to fund better workout equipment, one-on-one -on -one coaching, or nutritional supplements. Boom. So your um, thesis that thesis answers both are they worth the price it depends right if you're at the upper echelon yeah that might be worth it but if you're not like cream of the crop and already have everything else you need then no they might not be worth the price because you could buy these other things that would help you out do they improve your performance eh, slightly but that doesn't mean that that's they're the best uh, purchase for your money so regardless that could be your thesis, right? Your thesis needs to be something that answers both of your research questions. And make sure you've got sourced information, make sure you've read it, that backs it up. So when it comes time to write the thing, you're not having to change your whole topic. I see it a lot. People have to change their whole topic because whenever they actually read their sources, they find out, wow, I was wrong. This doesn't, what I thought I was going to write about isn't, uh, doesn't make sense according to the data I have, and they have to change everything. So. The assignment may say, write your thesis. However, the real assignment is, read your sources, 
know your answer, know what your thesis should be. And also, I'm checking the thesis, theses, I should say, multiple theses, or multiple theses. Uh, I'm checking them for grammar, spelling. If I look, see something that looks like a text message, I'm not reading it, I'm saying redo. Um, make it nice, make it academic, and most of all, uh, make sure it answers questions. Make sure it answers your research questions. So your answer should include your topic, your research questions retyped from before, or if you feel you need to change them, you can change them at any time. Research questions, and then your thesis. That's the assignment. Put it up there, um, and then we're going to get started writing whenever I return so we can make sure we have this thing done. Okay, good deal. That's non-DP. DP. You guys are still working on your CAS project, so hopefully by now you have an idea of what your CAS project's going to be. Uh, it could be literally anything, but you, you've hopefully looked into it online. There's tons of resources online about CAS project. Um, I wouldn't normally just send you to the wild and say, go look up stuff online, but I'm literally not an expert on CAS. It's new to me, too. Um, and I'm just trying to help you out and give you the space to do it. But... I, I'm sure you've learned by now the nature of this project is that it's not a sit, read, and write style project. It's to go do something. It doesn't have to be like feed the starving. It could be learn to play guitar. It could, it's almost like your MIP project, if you remember that. Um, but you have to do this on your own time. It's not something you can do in like, uh, you know, uh, lunch hour <laughs> on campus. Uh, you can research it, you can do a little bit of work, but mostly it's something you're doing on your own time uh, using your freedom to explore. And uh, that doesn't mean you have to go outside. I mean, you, like I said, it could be musical, uh, but you, like my project, involves delving into poetry. But it does need to be something that you go out and do on your own. So what is the assignment this week? Well, I want to make sure you've got a reasonable project and a means of finishing it. The due date for the project is May 19th, or excuse me, May 15th. Um, so we've got a little over a month, month and a half to do this. I want you to give me a timeline. I want you to just write out a quick timeline. I've got an example of mine below with three to four uh, major milestones that you're going to hit, what dates you'll hit them on. So you need to bring up a calendar, May 15th, and take a look and get uh, your major your uh, major milestones put in uh, by this point I'll have this done by this point I'll have this done by this point I'll have this done that way you know you can get it done uh, it's not really about me but I want you to put it in there that's how you get credit but it's not really about me I think that a lot of you might find that your projects are too lofty when you start putting it in you're like wow doing this might take two months three months well if that's the case you might need to change your project or scale it back a bit right um, maybe, maybe you don't focus so much on learning how to play, you know, Vivaldi on the guitar, but Mary had a little lamb. Uh, may, maybe something in between that, actually. But still, you you know, you scale it back. Scale it back to something you can do uh, within the next month and a half. So, I want your timeline written out with your milestones. That way you can double check it's a reasonable project for you and uh, stick to the timeline, get it done. Next, uh, next assignment will be about journaling. I want, I want to see how you're going to journal this thing. And then that's it. You do the thing, you do the project, you get it done, you journal how you got it done, write a little bit of reflection about it. It's not nearly as long as EE or TOK. Don't, it's, it's not going to be hard at all. Uh, it's really just kind of you either pass, fail, you either do it or you don't. Nobody's going to grade you on it as far as I know just get it done so uh, don't worry too much about the cast project just do it so at any rate got my example the timeline below now so that was my DP kiddos so as I said at the beginning for my kiddos who are in between who uh, perhaps did my TOK essay but they aren't DP kids you have your choice you do not get to sit there and do nothing for a quarter so your choices are and I've, I've spoken to a couple of uh, students about this but your choices are either one you can either go ahead and write a research paper for as if you were a non DP student for your final or you complete uh, you can complete a cast project there's no nothing that says you can't go do something so if you complete a compa uh, excuse me compass if you complete a cast project with some evidence of completing it 
that's fine. You get credit for this quarter. So I'll let it be your choice what you'd rather do. If you'd rather just write a 1,200 word research paper, actually a 1,000 word research paper, good to go. Write that 1,000 word research paper. If you would rather um, do something not like that, <laughs> not writing a CAS project, go start researching what CAS is, uh, catch up on these two assignments. And if you need the code to my um, non-DP course to catch up in our research paper, uh, send me an email. I'll give it to you. All right, that's it. See you guys. Uh, we'll be together on Thursday.